Kia ora New Zealand. In your bulletin today, Wellington has been a buzz with the world premiere of The Hobbit. Thousands of workers and volunteers have made the event a possibility as estimated numbers of close to 100,000 fans line the streets today to get a slice of the action. Neil Finn performed this afternoon to keep the crowd entertained in the sun. And the world premiere of the film will be shown on the big screen to a select audience for the very first time in its new 48 frames per second format at the Embassy Theatre. And even MPs have been unable to escape The Hobbit today with Minister Stephen Joyce wishing those in the debating chamber a happy Hobbit Day. Mr Joyce used a question on the government's support for the film industry to tell a Tolkien-style story about the Labour leadership battle. Labour tried unsuccessfully to shout Mr Joyce down as he spoke of a fellowship led by a tall, thinning grey wizard who surrounds himself with a loyal group of halflings. Sworn to protect him against a slimy bearded creature hiding and plotting in the darkness consumed by jealously relentlessly in pursuit of his precious however putting a slight tinge on the event animal rights group peter staged a small protest in the capital after accusing the production of the film for the mistreatment of some animals used in the film sir peter jackson struck back saying there was absolutely no mistreatment of animals and he called the organization pathetic St. Peter is a radical political organisation looking for media exposure. And the man who plays Gollum in The Hobbit says it was interesting getting back into the role years after he first did it. Andy Serkis played Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. We'd established Gollum in Lord of the Rings as a, the conflict and that kind of schizophrenic personality. That was very much part of him. And that's not something that really is clearly defined in The Hobbit book, but we wanted to retain it. And the Prime Minister is talking about the importance of hydraulic fracturing to the country's future energy needs. It comes as the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment has found fracking can be done safely if best practice is adopted. John Keebley's fracking is critically important to the oil and gas industry. You've seen in the United States the enormous use of shale gas and what that's done for sustainability of energy in the United States. And without the fracking, you know, I suspect it would hold New Zealand back. And New Zealand will not be opposing a bid by Palestine to gain a higher status at the United Nations. The vote is expected to take place tomorrow in New York. It seeks to raise Palestine's status from an observer to a non-member observer state. And a week after Mount Tongariro erupted for the second time this year, the volcano remains quiet. Last Wednesday, the mountain briefly sprang into life spewing ash more than four kilometres into the sky. GNS duty volcanologist Dr Brad Scott says an active volcano sits in three different states and Tongariro is continuing to sit in a state of unrest. He says the provisional report from Wednesday's eruption have detected some molten material in the ash around the mountain. And the Māori case on water rights has wrapped up in the High Court with Justice Young saying he should have a decision by Christmas. The partial sale of Mighty River Power hinges on the decision and the government wants that to happen between April and June next year. John Key says even if it goes to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, the timetable should be able to be kept. Well, I haven't had any advice to the contrary from our council yet that they're at all concerned about the timetable. It's highly predictable and it's following the track that they expected. And finally, it's not going to be a wet summer like it was last year. Niwa has released its climate outlook through until February and they're expecting to be some very dry areas around New Zealand. Soil moisture levels are said to be below normal as well as the rainfall. And that was your news headlines for November the 28th. Ka kite anō.